In today's video, we're going to be talking about the top four ways that you can help your business grow in 2023. I felt it was necessary to make an episode on these principles because in your day-to-day -day business operations, it's so easy to forget some of those vital reoccurring steps that's important to continue to make month after month to ensure that your business is growing optimally. And some of the reasons why it's easy to overlook these fundamental steps is, you know, say you run a restaurant or your business is a restaurant, you're probably more focused on your labor, your food costs. If Jan, Sam or Bob called in today or if if they even made it to work at all this week, if you need to hire more people or you're worried if your truck shipment has come in with your products. So it's easy to overlook some of the quote, smaller things when it comes to the digital side of your business or the online side of your business or whatever. So not only is this episode going to cover those things that you do need to focus on alongside running the day-to-day -day operations of your business, but we're going to solidify the reasons why these steps are important. So we're going to get straight into it. Number one, we need to diversify our customer acquisition and retention techniques. So let's get an understanding of what the root of this tip means. Diversify your customer acquisition techniques. Say for instance, you are a plumber or an electrician and the main route you go about getting new customers is through word of mouth advertisement. You do good work for somebody and they advertise your business to their friends or family. Or you may leave signs in the yards of the customers whose houses you've serviced or provided services for. And by nature, people driving by that house, they see your sign, they may call you to book an appointment. Some plumbers or electricians, they also have a social media account or they may have a Google My Business profile and they rely heavily on just people seeing their posts that they post day to day, but they're not, you know, really running ads or they haven't even considered some kind of marketing campaign. So what it would mean to diversify your customer acquisition techniques is if you currently have a website and some social media accounts, but you're not really posting any content to a blog on your website, which could garner good organic SEO traffic to your website, or if you're not running ads on your social platforms, or if you have a Google My Business profile and you're not running ads to it, one way to diversify is of course to run ads on those platforms. And it's well worth it. You have to get out of the mindset of, oh, there's no point in running ads because I can get organic traffic if I really work my SEO optimization. Most every business owner that I onboard as my client, when we first have our initial consultation, they always say the same things. I just want to focus on SEO and organic traffic. And then I have the conversation with them. Do you realize that if you're running advertisements, you can analyze the data to find out how many dollars it's costing to obtain a new client, right? Or a new customer. Say on average, your business makes $100 for every customer that you obtain, and that's profit. Well, what would it hurt to spend advertisement dollars if for every $20 in ads you spend, you're getting a customer, you're still profiting $80. So if you were running ads and you were spending $100 a day in ads, and you don't have to spend that much a day, but I'm just trying to make the math make sense. If you were running ads and spending $100 a day and you were getting an extra five clients at $20 a client on the ad spend that you're spending, wouldn't it be worth it since at the end of the day, you now have five new clients or five new customers every single day that you wouldn't have had before you were spending money on advertisements. And just think if you're still profiting $80 for every one of those five customers you're bringing in, that's a great day. <laughs> so the first part of tip number one was diversifying your customer acquisition strategy or technique. And that could be interpreted multiple ways. In the example that we just covered, it would be to start running ads if you wasn't running ads currently. Or another idea is if you only have social media accounts on, you know, Facebook and Instagram, diversify 
the channels that you are currently marketing on. Go ahead and grab a Twitter. Go ahead and grab a LinkedIn. Go ahead and grab a TikTok because those are extra channels that can garner more clients because more people can see your content and that obtains more clients. Let's get to the second part of the first tip, which is diversify your customer retention technique or diversify your customer retention strategy. An example of this tip in action is some coffee shops and some bakeries utilize a customer loyalty card and they just punch holes in it every time a customer comes in and buys a new coffee or a new baked item or something. And after five or 10 hole punches, they can get an, an item for free, which is great because that is given that customer the ability to keep being a reoccurring customer or a patron of that company and they get something in return. So that example is a great way to ensure that a customer would stay loyal and would keep coming to your business. Now, there are other ways that you can incentivize a customer to stay loyal to your brand or to your company to ensure that you're able to keep them as your customer. Another example of a great customer retention technique would be to say, when a customer checks out with you, if you visit the shop in the next month or the next couple of weeks, we'll give you 15% off your next order. So that's another great way to think about customer retention and to find out different ways that you can make sense of that to incorporate it in your business. Tip number two, boosting productivity and efficiency by automation. Now, the number one thing that we do not have as business owners is time. If we could find out how to grab some time back, we would be doing great because the more time we have, the more focus we can spend in the areas that really need our attention. There are tools online such as Zapier or Pably Connect that do what's called automations, and they integrate with virtually any software that you could possibly be using right now for your business. And it's important to take a look at some of those pieces of software because it can save you a tremendous amount of time. And by example, I'll share with you how I use automation strategies in my business so I'm able to accomplish a lot more than I could if I was not utilizing those automation strategies. So in my business, I have various ways where customers can submit a form and interact or get something from my business. You know, one of those forms is to request a free consultation. One of those forms is, you know, to receive the first free chapter of one of my books if they fill the form out, of course. And, you know, another new instance of this integration is I'm offering a free website development program for any small business that needs it that can't afford to hire a web developer. Now, traditionally before utilizing Pably Connect or Zapier, when someone was to fill a form out, I would get a notification and email that someone filled that form out, but that's where the buck stopped. With Pably Connect specifically, I have an automation happening that anytime anyone fills out any one of those forms, Pably will automatically submit their data over to my CRM or my sales pipeline, which is what I utilize to keep track of where people are in their in my customer journey or my customer acquisition journey. You know, so, so they may start over here requesting something, then I follow up with them, they end up here. And then when they're sold or the deal's won, they end up over here. And there's other automations that I have set happening based on where they are in that journey, which is really great. So before utilizing automations, after someone was to fill out a form, I would manually have to type their data in my CRM and then make whatever step that needed to happen, happen, whether it was manually send them an email or manually give them a call or something to make sure that step was complete. And then whenever they moved on to the next column in my pipeline or the next stage in my sales process, I would then have to manually move them over, manually send out emails, manually give calls and whatnot. And I do need to say there are still steps that I manually take because I don't automate the whole business. I like having a human touch to my business, but all the mundane steps, like when someone fills out the form, I don't need to type their information and manually send an email. I have an automation going on to do those steps for me. Then after I follow up with the person, depending on which route they go in my sales pipeline, I have automations to automatically move them there, update their data, 
automatically send out emails to them in response to everything that is going on with that part of my sales process. And that saves me probably 30 minutes per client per automation stage because there's a lot of data to digest and a lot of steps to take. And when you get to thinking about that, as one person running a business, it would be hard for me to scale my business up if I'm spending five hours a day just typing in data when I could be spending that five hours a day dealing with the clients and helping them out. So that's how automation really helps me. And not to mention there are other automations that I have going on. Like every time I upload a new YouTube video, I have an automation that takes the RS feed for my YouTube video and converts it into a newsletter and automatically emails all my newsletter subscribers without me even having to touch my email marketing software. It'll do it for me without me having to do anything. And you already know if you manage an email newsletter or you're writing new emails or anything, you could already see how it could save time utilizing some kind of automation. But virtually anything in your business can be automated Just think, if you're taking time typing in data or sharing something from one platform to another platform, all that can be automated. There's no reason to have to keep manually doing all of that by yourself. And not to mention, with the technology that's available and the automations and the integrations for the automations that are available, you might be able to get rid of two or three hired positions that you're paying people for hourly to and simply use software to automate their jobs altogether. And if you were to do that, you would save a lot of overhead operational expenses. Tip number two kind of leads us into tip number three, which is implement email and or SMS marketing to nurture your leads. Now, even if you're not a service-based business and you're a customer acquisition type business to where people buy your products in retail or e-commerce, this still applies to you. You still need to nurture your leads. And even after a customer has purchased from your business, you still need to nurture your leads because you got to keep them engaged with your business for the next time you drop a new product. The number one thing I tell my clients when I onboard them to begin with that doesn't necessarily believe in email marketing is the fact that When you start an email marketing campaign and you start developing an email marketing list, the reason it's important is because you never have to pay money in the future to retarget that audience. And what I mean by that is when you're running advertisements on Facebook or Google or anything, and say a customer sees an ad and buys something from you, or say they see an ad and they don't, In order to retarget them with a future ad, you're still going to have to pay advertisement dollars in order to get them to see that ad. The beauty of email or SMS text message marketing is the fact that once someone's on your list, your email list or your text list, it doesn't cost more money to retarget them with a future ad. And you're able to differentiate if you want to send text messages or emails to people based on their behavior. So if someone's already purchased something, you are able to target them specifically. Or say someone went to your website, clicked a couple buttons, but didn't actually commit the purchase. You're able to target them specifically as well. You're able to target based on intent and based on the actions that they performed. One of these very powerful SMS and email marketing automations that I utilize for a lot of my clients is utilizing the software that we use, LeadShark, because of the fact we can have these automations with email and SMS trigger whenever someone calls in, right? So say, for instance, someone calls your business, but you were too busy to get to the phone to answer it. Well, we can have a trickle down trigger. So when someone calls in, they transfer to this person if that's who needs to receive the call or this person if they, that's who needs to receive the call. Or they can just transfer to one phone line if, if only one person can receive the call, depending on the business, right? And say this one person does not pick the phone up. Well, we can have an automation telling the system to record a voicemail from the caller, but then immediately after, it can follow up with that caller with a text message saying, hey, we appreciate you guys call in or you calling into the office today, but sorry, we were too busy with, you know, customer service or or whatever, and we will return your call promptly. 
You can even follow up with an email or whatever have you. You know, say you sent out an email when someone filled out a lead form on your website and say you want the email to go out immediately when they fill the form out. Well, when the email goes out, you can have an automation playing in your email marketing software to say, wait five minutes and see if the person opened that email. If they did not, send a text message and tell them to do this and see if they opened that text message. If not, repeat this process tomorrow or in 12 hours. Now it can be completely customized to however you need it to be customized to fit your business needs. But the principle that I'm trying to drive home with this tip is because of how powerful technology is with automations and email marketing and SMS marketing capabilities, you need to understand how it could benefit you and save you time. But not only can it save you time, it can make your customer's experience more favorable with your business, especially in times that maybe you can't make it to the phone or maybe you can't respond to them immediately. Or maybe you want to keep them engaged with future products. And that's why email marketing and SMS marketing is important and vital to every business, regardless of the industry they're in. And last but not least is tip number four. Embrace social media by planning and scheduling your content. This tip is something I just started to implement in my own business. Where I am one person and I'm responsible for client acquisition, sales, making sure that the job gets done for my customers. It's extremely hard for me to also spend time managing the eight or 10 social media accounts that I have as a business owner, but it's important to manage all of those social media accounts because it's a free way to obtain new traffic, a free way to obtain new leads. There's software out there like Loomly, like Buffer, like Hootsuite, that can really take a lot of that pressure off of you. Before I started using Loomly as my scheduling software, every time I wanted to upload a new piece of content to all my social accounts, it would take about an hour for every one post, regardless if it was a video, text, or a picture, because it all has to be customized separately, right? With Loomly, I can open it up in my computer. It's already connected to every social media account I have, and I'm able to select post this item, select all the social accounts I want it to post to, when I want it to post there, and as a result, I'm able to schedule it for the future or whenever or publish it immediately, and it will auto-publish to all accounts without me having to manually do anything. And the reason that's important is now one hour of my time for social media management can schedule up 14 days worth of social media posts for all of my social media accounts all at once. When before using Loomly or another tool like Loomly, you can use whatever really, it would take me an hour just to make one post and I couldn't pre-schedule it. So it's something that you should definitely look into, a social media management software, social media scheduling app, because it can save you a lot of time. And going back to one of the earlier tips that I talked about in this podcast episode, you need to take advantage of all social media for your business because social media is free. Now imagine if you go ahead and set up 10 different social media accounts for your business and pair it with a social media management app to where you just push one button and it posts to everything. It's no different than having one social media account because it takes the same amount of time. So think about that. And I hope you found value out of today's podcast episode because some of the topics we covered and talked about during this were topics that have really helped my business grow. And I hope that it helps your business grow as well. I'll catch you in the next episode. So I'm happy to announce the launch of my free website program. This program is designed to help small business owners, entrepreneurs, and people that really need a professional website to help them out in whatever business they're pursuing, if it's service-based or you know a retail type of business. But maybe they just don't have the budget to hire a web developer or a web development agency. And I could understand why, you know, hiring a web developer sometimes costs 5000 to $20,000. Knowing that is why I developed this program. My clients have been so good to me over the last few years. You know, I have some extra time available 
and resources as well to where I want to give back to the community. And while I can't accept every application, I can accept about 34% of all applications because it's not going to take too much of my time. But all you have to do to apply to be considered for my free website program is click the link below this video and fill out the short form. It's just going to take less than two minutes to fill that form out. And you can read over some of the information about what's included and why it's important to have a website for your business in the first place. How the process works is simple. If your application is one of the ones that are accepted to have a free professional website built for you, I'll be in contact with you either by phone or by email to where we're able to schedule a consultation to where we can talk one-on-one -on -one so I can understand what type of website in detail that you're needing built for you. You know, what kind of features you want on the website and how you want it to look. I'll also get a Google Drive folder set up so if you have logos for your business or for your website, you can drop them in there along with any pictures of your business or anything you want to be used for your website. And then after that, I get to work. After I start work on your website, most all websites are complete within 48 hours, and then we'll be able to launch your website. And the beauty is I'm not going to charge you one dollar or one dime to build your website because I believe that by doing this, it not only helps the small business owners and individuals that can't afford a website development team to help them out, but I also believe that when those businesses start doing well and grow and they need help in the future with marketing or maybe they need help in the future with another website, they'll go on to hire me again. But in that time, they'd be willing to, to pay my fees. So, you know, of course, there's no obligation necessary. And I don't do this expecting that to happen because it's a great way to not only help out the community, but network with small business owners that are getting started so I can help them in the future. The only costs associated with the free website program is hosting. And that's true with anything. If you go pay a development team, you know, a couple thousand dollars to build a website, you still have to have that website hosted on a server. So that's the only costs associated with the free website program, but there's absolutely zero cost to have the website developed. So be sure to check that out because that could help you save thousands of dollars and it could help you develop a business and grow your business better because Facebook or an Instagram page is not going to cut it in business.